Hello, I'm Dr. Lisa Belial, and you are listening to or watching Radio Maine. Today I have with me artist James Bonner. Nice to be with you today. Nice to be with you too. And of course, we're, we're, we're with one another virtually and remotely. So uh, we've gone back into this format temporarily based on weather-related issues. So thank you for uh, working through the technology with us. Now, it looks like you've got some beautiful pieces uh, behind you. Is this, uh, is this your home? Is this your studio? Where are you located right now? Um, I'm located in Kittery, Maine. It's the southern part of Maine, the very right on the border of New Hampshire and, and Maine, actually. So, yes, I work out of, out of my house. Um, the studio is located in the house. So uh, it's a nice, nice little space here. And, um, yeah, I've got a couple of oil paintings here on the back, back behind me um, that I've been working on uh, recently. So, uh, um just kind of, I kind of dabble in all different mediums. So uh, oil is kind of what I'm into now. So, uh, you know, I kind of, I did a lot of watercolor and acrylic and gouache for my um, show that just started at the Portland Gallery. And uh, kind of slowing things down a little bit and uh, going with some oil paintings, which take a little bit longer to uh to finish i enjoy working with all different mediums so is it because of the um the way that the paint uh kind of responds to the canvas is it because the for those of us who are not artists um is it because the paint takes longer to dry why does it take longer for something in oil to be finished well yeah oil paints because they are based oil oil based, they do take longer to dry. And the way I work with them, and actually I work with the same way with acrylic and watercolor, um, by layering translucent layer layers of paint over each other. But with acrylic and watercolor, the paint dries immediately. And um, with oil, it takes hours, sometimes days to dry. Um, this one over here, the, the bell, uh, I, I, I actually put a layer on it. And I used a glazing medium, and it's, it's, it's actually been drying for almost a week now. I'm getting very impatient. <laughs> on that one um but it's about ready to the layer that i put down is about ready to be dry so i can i can go over it with another layer so i layer the colors uh, starting out very transparent translucent and i build up the opacity each layer so my 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 final layers are are pretty opaque and uh, I never get really thick, um, but they are pretty, pretty heavy by the time I get to the end, particularly in the white areas uh, when I use a lot of white in the paint. Um, in this other still life over here, uh, it's, it's just about done. I probably got another layer to go over it and then uh, varnish it and then sign it. So, um, and these are on, these are actually on birch panels, not on canvas. So, um, I do work on canvas too, but the smaller the image, I like to work more on a panel because you don't get the texture of the, of the weave of the, of the fabric of the canvas or the linen coming through, especially when you're doing some detail, a lot of detail, uh, in the work. The painting behind you, uh, the Monhegan Lifeline, is on a panel, and that's acrylic also. And there's many layers on that, but the difference on that being acrylic is that 
the paint dries immediately so I can layer it just, you know, very quickly, very quickly. Whereas the oils, I have to have a little bit more patience, <laughs> which is kind of hard. So, and also work in egg tempera, which dries very quickly too. And I work in layers, transparent, translucent layers, uh, building up the opacity on that. But, but egg tempera dries fast also. So um, you can layer it pretty quickly. But yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a process. And I do enjoy slowing down sometimes and, and working a little bit slower. And I, I love the oil paints too, just the quality of the uh, the oil. There's a little bit, for me when I use them, there's a little bit more softness uh, to the image um, and not quite a hard edge, I would say, to the image when I'm painting it, if I can explain it that way. But yeah, it's kind of in a nutshell. That so process. It sounds like you've used a variety of mediums um, for quite some time. Was there one that initially um, drew you to it that you spent time really getting very good at before you moved on? Or have you always just taken a broader approach? Well, when I was when I was in school in college and, and studying, um, I studied under um, primarily under Al Allen, who was a Southern artist that's pretty well known, and um, he 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 basically we worked in acrylic and oil, so I started out in oil paint actually but I really wasn't crazy about it early on um, I became interested in uh, the Wyeths, Andrew Wyeth, Jamie Wyeth, Winslow Homer while I was in school and um, so those artists used a lot of watercolor so I really got interested in watercolor primarily um, and started just experimenting with that. I didn't really have any instruction on it. I, you know, I kind of consider myself self-taught in a way because I, um, I just basically experimented. And whenever I got a chance to go see uh, Andrew Wyeth, or Jamie Wyeth exhibit at a museum or anything that had Winslow Homer, um, I went and basically just got that far from a painting, you know, and just studied it and tried to figure out, you know, how they use their, their technique with the medium. And, uh, then I'd go back to the studio and just experiment. And, um, not necessarily, not, not really wanting to copy them, but I was very interested in, in how they used watercolor primarily. And then from, from watercolor, I became very interested in egg tempera, which is a very ancient medium, predates oil painting. It was a Renaissance medium where you use the yolk of an egg and you mix it with distilled water. You separate the yolk from the, the sack and the white of the egg, pour it in a, I pour it in a little glass jar, mix in some distilled water until you get the right consistency. And then um, you use dry pigments um, and mix the pigment in with the yolk and the water and it makes a paste. And um, so anyway, I basically, Andrew Wyeth ha, has painted with egg tempera, or you know, he's no longer alive, but painted with egg tempera. So I did the same thing. Every time I went to a Wyeth exhibit, 
I studied egg temper just by looking at his work and then going back to the studio and experimenting and um, till I figured out kind of what I thought he was doing and then I took it from there and I I, I used my own you know basically techniques off of that but I figured out the basics on my own and then um, kind of went with it after that but but yeah, a lot of it has been it has been just through experimentation, learning how to do things. So I, I do consider myself a little bit a little bit self taught, <laughs> which I don't think it's a bad thing. No, it always seems like it's a little bit of a mixture of both for most people who are artists. Mm-hmm. True. Very true. Very true. What is it about Andrew Wyeth that appealed to you? His work is probably of all artists struck the, the most, struck a chord with me. I think it's um, not only his, I, I, I love the way he applied the paint and his style of painting, but I love the simplicity of his paintings, how he simplified the image down to um, the essence of what he was trying to express. And that, that, that to me really resonated. And I, that's what I try to do in my work. I, I, I heavily edit my work. Um, landscapes I take out a lot of it, extraneous detail and, and bring it down to what just very minimal um, image and I mean it all has to work in the composition too so that's important and um, I just try to get it down to to the very essence of what I'm trying to say um, in the painting um, but Wyeth was a master of that, I felt like, Andrew particularly, and Jamie also, but, but Andrew, um, Andrew was really a master of that. And there, there's just, um, something about his personality too, I just seemed to resonate with me also. Um, I, I'm, I'm somewhat shy and a little bit reclusive and um i i i like that about him he 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 kind of kept to himself even though he was very famous and became very famous i mean he he <laughs> he just kind of roamed the countryside and did his you know did his work and didn't uh, toot his horn a lot, you know, and just let his work speak for himself. So that's, I just, it just really resonated with me. But uh, yeah, I, I would say, I would say that uh, those, those particular aspects are what attracted me to him the most. It sounds like you came to Maine in part because you wanted to more um, deeply learn about the Wyeths. Where are you originally from? I am um, originally from Little Rock, Arkansas, which is considered actually southern, like a southern state, but um, never really considered it southern it's almost middle of the country but as you can probably hear i probably really sound southern <laughs> i mean i don't sound like a lot of mayors but um i have been coming to maine i was born in little rock and uh was pretty much raised there and in the mid 90s i um after studying the Wyeths and Winslow Homer, Edward Hopper, 
Rockwell Kent, all these representational artists that that um, that I admired. I all of them had a connection with Maine. Some of them, you know, lived lived here. Some of them had homes here. Some of them just came and painted here. But I always loved their work from Maine, and I just when I started studying their work and became interested in them, I just became interested in Maine. And back in the mid nineties, I just, I was like, I've got to go there and experience this place. And, um, and I'd love to do some paintings, you know, from, from that area. So that's primarily what drew me to Maine was studying the artists that painted here. And, um, a lot, of, you know, I just never was able to, to, to actually come and live here and for the personal reasons. And, um, but I did visit quite often throughout the years. Um, and I would come take photographs, sketch, get as much subject matter as I could and go back to Arkansas and paint. And, um, and I have, I've had representation here in Maine, um, primarily in the mid coast area for, for 20 something years actually. So, yeah, but I've never, I've never, I've never been here all year round. I've just, I've just had to make visits here in the past, but now it's full time and that's, it's, it's wonderful. I mean, I just love, although this is my first full winter, going to be my first full winter here. It's a, it's a little bit of a new experience for that. A little colder than, than Arkansas, but, but, um, it's going to give me, give me opportunities to actually do some winter scenes from here and not just all summer and spring which I'm looking forward to, actually. One of the reasons that we're doing this remotely is because we actually are having a winter day. And so trying to travel, obviously, is a bit of an issue. And uh, people who are listening closely can probably hear some of the participation on our roof over here. I don't think we're hearing much from over on your roof. But um, but it's good to hear that you actually are coming to some sense of... Uh, at least acceptance regarding the weather, considering that Arkansas has a very different climate. I love the winter time also. Um, but there is nothing like the spring and summer in May. I mean, you can, I don't care how bad the winter gets. It's what, you know, or how long it is. It's worth those, those months that you get in the spring and summer, just, um, mainly, I mean, I, I, I love the light that, that, uh, that you get in the spring and summer here in Maine. It's just like no other light that I've seen elsewhere. It's amazing. And I love to paint it. I mean, of course, like so many other artists, they love to, to paint light, uh, how it falls on a wall or just on foliage in the woods. I mean, it's just amazing light here. It's like no other. There's a clarity to it that, um, that I haven't seen anywhere else, actually. So exactly. tell me about your connection to Monhegan. When, what was it about Monhegan? Is it simply because it's something that has always drawn artists or was there something special about um, this island off the coast of Maine? Well, once again, it goes back to uh, the connection with the artists that have have always painted there or have painted there in the past, I should say. Um, I just was really intrigued with the paintings that I saw from, um, from Jamie Wyeth, uh, and now Andrew very rarely traveled to Monhegan, uh, but Jamie, his son, painted a lot on Monhegan and actually has a house there. Um, 
Rockwell Kent's old house, Jamie lives on, which is actually the painting you have behind you. Jamie Wise house is like within a stone's throw of that painting that I have behind you. Uh, that's, that's, it's called Lobster Cove. And uh, Jamie's house faces out to sea right by that painting. Um, he's actually done a painting um, from, from, from a different angle of that exact uh, lifeline that, that's, that I've represented there. But um, hey, it's probably just because of the artists um, that I admire. Their paintings from Monhegan, and um, I wanted to go there and experience it, and I fell in love with it. Uh, and I, you know, I've produced quite a few paintings and drawings from Monhegan. I've actually still got a lot of subject matter from Monhegan that I've yet to get to. Um, so. Um, there's something about Monhegan too that's just, uh, it, although it is a big tourist attraction now, it's just a, it's basically a fishing and lobster village, and um, it's just kind of stepping back in time. Everything slows down on Monhegan, and I love that. I love that. You're just kind of out of touch, and. And for me, and for, for, for any artist that goes there, you're just totally surrounded by, by possible paintings everywhere. Um, and that, that, you know, that actually is what I love about Maine, is whenever I get in, a, in my vehicle and I go for a drive or I go for my you know, hour-long walk, um, it's always like there's a possible painting down around the next corner, you know, peeking. You know, like I, I'm always like, if I'm if I'm walking, I'm always looking down these long driveways um, that that go through the woods because, I mean, there's there's just a possible painting right anywhere anywhere I go or look. And um, that's something that's always intrigued me about Maine, particularly when I, when I go for a drive and I'm just like kind of open for and, and being receptive for anything to hit me to paint. Um, sometimes it's just like sensory overload though here. And when I've been away from Maine um, in the past and I would get here, it was like, it was total sensory overload. I mean, I would have to like slow down, okay, you know, because I would have, I would just almost come on a painting everywhere I went. I mean, it was just, it's just amazing. It's just a wonderful place. That's an interesting comment because I think many people think of Maine as a place where they, um, allow their senses to rest. I think a, a lot of people drive over the bridge from New Hampshire into Maine and they feel a sense of release and quiet and peace. But as an artist and someone who spends his life really focusing on images, I can see how that would have the opposite effect. I, I, I've just had episodes where I've just had to, you know, forcibly like, Calm down, <laughs> just calm down. Um, there's plenty of time, you know. You can come back to this. You don't have to get it right now. Um, you know, it's going to be here. But some things are fleeting, though. I mean, some 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 images you come on, you you have to you have to get at that moment because you'll never get another opportunity and. I don't actually do a lot of uh, plein air type work where I'm actually out in the field, like painting. Um, I do some with watercolor because it's it's an immediate type of uh, medium. You know, you can 
you can put it down quickly and there's not a lot of preparatory work. Um, but with egg tempera oil and acrylic, I prefer to, to lock myself in the studio and work on those images, you know, in the studio. But I do use sketches, you know, a sketchbook. I do use uh, my camera. I take it with me a lot. And um, I do take a lot of reference images um, to work from. And, and you know, you, you, you just, like I said, some images you have to capture right then and there. They're not going to be, you're not going to get another opportunity. So that's why I try to um, have a way to do that, um, to always capture something that I see that I want to get, that I feel like will never, I'll never get another opportunity. When you were growing um, up, did you have, um, did your family members encourage you to get into art? I would say when I was in high school, probably the, I had a high school teacher that was a, a big influence of mine. So, um, I also played sports. I was a football player. So my, I'm getting to my family thing here in a roundabout way, but, um, so I was into athletics also, football, but I also had this artistic side and, um, I don't think my father really understood my artistic side so much. He, he, not that he discouraged it, but I think he would have rather me gone on and played sports at a higher level, which I, when I got to college, I decided to study art instead of football started, you know, instead of going on and playing football which I had opportunities to do, but I chose to, to, um, go with the art, with the art side of me. <laughs> so I, I, I don't think I got a lot of encouragement art wise. Um, my mom was always very supportive of me either way. Um, as I think most, most mothers are, I mean, you know, my dad had a little bit more trouble with the, with the artistic side and uh, he just enjoyed the sports and football so much, but, um, I, they weren't, and all of my siblings were supportive of me, but, um, uh, it, it, it wasn't particularly an artistic family. So I was kind of on my, you know, I kind of forged my own path there, which was, um, which was okay, which is fine. I, I have um, I have a brother and two sisters, so come from a family of four. So we all have, you know, done different things, and that's fine. And that's there's nothing wrong with that. Did your father play football himself, or did your brother or sisters play football or play sports? Oh uh, no, my. My dad did some when he was young. Um, uh, my brother, who's now, my brother is a, a, a physician, a family physician, and um, he did play football. He was two years younger than me, and uh, he also played football uh, and uh, was into sports. But he had offers to play, too, but he chose to go medical school and be a doctor so uh, so he, he kind of went another way also but um, everybody everyone in my family has been very encouraging of, of my artistic uh, endeavors I would say well please as a fellow family physician please do give my regards to your brother because it actually is a very special and important um, work that 
he is doing right now and certainly one that is not very easy. So we're lucky uh, to have him doing that out there. He is, a, um, of course, he's my brother and I'm so proud of him. I mean, he's just, I think he's a phenomenal physician. Um, kind of from the old, old school of physician. I mean, he, <clears throat> he does a little bit of everything, I think. Um, and he works with a lot of, uh, rural, like farmers and things like that. Cause his the area that he's in in Arkansas, he has a lot of, uh, people that come in from, from the farm and things like that. So uh, he's just, he's just a good guy and a good doctor. <laughs> I think I can relate a little bit because even though I practice in Maine, we also have a fair number of patients who come from rural parts of the state. And mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm actually doing uh, distance-based doctoral studies through the University of Arkansas. So it's been very interesting for me to uh, be working with people who are from a very different part of the country. And it's a, uh, I think the culture that you grow up in, um, for you, it was Arkansas. I mean, it really does influence your life in a way that you probably don't recognize while you're growing up. I would agree. I would agree. That's interesting. That's pretty cool that you're, you're working with, um, with uh, some rich from the, from the medical, from the University of Arkansas, the medical. Um, I'm doing actually the, the, doctoral program I'm doing is the University of Central Arkansas. So we're doing it mostly with teachers, but it's a community-based leadership program. So that's, oh, okay. that's even more interesting because I get to work with people not only from Arkansas, which is very different than Maine, but also people who are nothing like me. So. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Arkansas, a, it's, it's a great state. Um, the people are warm and friendly and so are the people here in Kittery, in Maine. I mean, it, it's, I mean, it, it's kind of the same thing. It's, uh, it's just diff different accents, you know, basically. <laughs> but uh, Arkansas um, is, is, I mean, it is a, it's a, it's a great state, and um, I've always loved living here in Arkansas, but. For some reason, I have just had this infatuation with New England, and um, I think a lot of that did start um, when I started studying the Wyas and um, you know the other artists that, that worked here in, in Maine. And um, but I also love the architecture, the New England architecture. The clapboard houses, um, something, something just really drew me to that that style of architecture. Um, I loved, I, I, even though I don't have anything, you know, behind me or but, or you, or you have anything on the wall there. I do do a, incorporate a lot of like the white clapboard houses. New England houses, and um, I just get the biggest thrill out of painting the light that falls across the the New England Cape style houses, the clapboard houses, um, the windows in these houses. I, I I just get I just love to paint the way light hits those houses, um, and. That's one of the things I, that attracted me to New England was was the uh, simplicity simplicity of the architecture, the early architecture I'm talking about, and um, that that style of house, um, and I would also say that something that interests me about New England too was the kind of the birth of our country in that area, in this area, you know, um, that's really kind of interested me too. Like this is where, this is where, you know, the area, the country began and, 
Um, just always kind of in, in, interested me. And, and I always wanted to just um, be a part of that for some reason. Not that I'm shunning Arkansas or anything, but I've always, I've always had this interest since I started, you know, really in college, basically studying the artists that I liked about um, really being a part of this part of the country where it, where we all began, where it began. And, um, I don't know. It's just. Uh, it's taken me a while to get here to actually live here, but uh, um, you know, it's sometimes things take a while to <laughs> to mature, and uh, I'm just glad I'm I'm able to get here now, and I've I've got hopefully enough time to to produce a lot more work from this area. So we are very lucky to have you here in Maine. And I encouraged people who want to learn more about James Bonner or his art to go to the Portland Art Gallery in Portland or to the Portland Art Gallery website. Also come to one of the openings at the Portland Art Gallery and perhaps you will meet James there. It's certainly been a pleasure for me to get to know you today, James. Thank you for joining me. Well, thank you, Lisa. It's been a pleasure um, being a part of this today. I'm not going to lie, I was a little, I've been a little bit nervous about this. This is a little bit out of my realm, but um, um, it's been a, it, it has been a pleasure, though. Well, you did a great job. Well, thank you. Thank you.